warm welcome to part one of this Harry Potter sleep saga. This is a magical sleep story adventure where you are the main character. In tonight's story, you begin your journey as a new wizard and take an enchanting trip to Diagon Alley where you will enter the very heart of the wizarding world. As you take a moment to get comfortable now, remind yourself that this is your story and your adventure. Anyone that you meet along the way throughout this saga can be whoever you want them to be. They might be people from your own life, a famous figure that you admire, or a character from the books. There are no limits here, so be sure to bring your own unique imagination along for the ride. Before we begin, we will do a short breathing pattern called 445. This is designed to help you slow down and quiet your mind after a long and busy day, preparing you for a good night's sleep and allowing your imagination to unlock. So, when you are ready, just exhale any remaining breath that you have and as you feel the urge to breathe in, then inhale for four. Hold it here for four. And release for five. Allow the body to become heavy and the mind to empty. So that's in for four, hold for four, and out for five, imagine that you are blowing away any remaining worries or thoughts, this is your time to relax, again in for four, hold for four, and out for five, just let all of it go, continue to breathe in this way in your own time, and allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper into comfort. And now, allow your breath to return to a natural rhythm. Let your thoughts turn to those of magic, wonder and adventure, as we begin part one of our Harry Potter sleep saga, A Mysterious Letter. It is a bright and beautiful morning 
at the end of August, and you are sitting in your bedroom, keeping cool in the summer heat. A small fan blows gently round the room, and a refreshing tingle washes over your face and body with its passing. Outside the open window, the sapphire sky is peppered with a wisp of cloud and backed by a golden sunrise. The sound of morning birds begins to drift into your room, and the bright green leaves of the trees outside ripple gently with the soft breeze. Directly opposite your window and across the street, you notice a small black and white cat lying out flat under the shade of a tree, fast asleep. Occasionally, you see their eyes flick up as one or two birds cross its path above them. But it's far too warm to consider chasing birds today. Once or twice, the cat looks directly at you and you can't shake the feeling that they know something you don't. As you sit in your room, you find yourself remembering the dream you had last night, the dream you have most nights. The details are vivid. You see yourself standing outside a tall, beautiful castle with high grey towers and a courtyard of stone. Standing next to you is your best friend, one of the most important people in your life, and you both share a smile. You wear long, dark robes and carry a magic wand. Crowds of wizards are running back and forth happily, hurrying to lessons or enjoying a game with their friends. It feels safe here, secure and comforting. In this dream, you feel as though you have walked through the front door of your own home. The castle feels like an old friend that you have reunited with at last. You know that you have never seen that castle, only in your dreams. You're not even sure if it's real, but you have always felt that there is something different about you, something unique. And you'd be right to think so. You suddenly wake from the memory of your dream as you notice the outside breeze quickly change direction. The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. You feel different. You know today hold something special for you. In that moment, you hear a low hooting sound. And as you turn to look out of your window, you can hardly believe your eyes when you see a small brown owl flying steadily towards your window, something hanging from its beak. With a graceful beat of its wings, the owl lands softly on the outside ledge, hooting happily, having found its destination. It hops inside the window onto a small table nearby, patting its feet excitedly as its tiny head cocks to one side inquisitively. An excitement builds in your stomach. You have a feeling that all of your dreams are about to come true. The little owl hops toward you three times, three tiny hops, 
urging you to take the piece of paper from its beak. As you take it from the owl, you see that it is not a piece of paper, but a letter. A letter written in emerald calligraphy on a cream parchment. A letter addressed to you. Your eyes widen with amazement as you turn the letter in your hands and find an unbroken wax seal on the back. The seal bears a crest divided into four and in each quarter is a different animal. A lion, a serpent, an eagle and a badger. Unable to resist, you break the seal and remove the letter from the envelope, unfolding the parchment. Across the top, in capital letters, reads the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and next to it is the same emblem as the wax seal, this time hand-drawn in black ink and pulsing with a steady light. Your heart beats in anticipation, and you read on excitedly as the message in the letter reveals something that deep down you have always known. There is a power in you, a magical power, and you are no ordinary soul. You are a wizard. It should be a surprise, and yet it feels as though every day of your life has been leading to this moment. It all makes sense. You notice a long paper ticket fall out of the letter, dated 11 o'clock tomorrow morning for the Hogwarts Express, leaving from platform nine and three quarters. On a separate piece of paper is a long list of equipment, books, and items needed before your term starts. There is also a small silver key with a tag hanging from it. The writing on the tag conveys the fact that your muggle money is no more. It has been transferred, and your new wizarding money awaits you now in your vault at the Great Goblin Bank, and it can be opened with this key. You have no idea where to find any of these things, but you know the letter holds the answer. Your eyes are drawn once again to the pulsing emblem at the top, and then you watch in amazement as a new message is being handwritten onto your letter in real time. The note reads, When you are ready to begin your adventure, gaze upon the crest and speak the words, Take me there. For a moment, you hesitate. Everything seems to be happening so quickly, and your whole life is about to change. With a deep breath, you remind yourself that while change can be scary, it's far better than standing still. A world of magic, of wonder, and possibility awaits you. A smile grows on your face as you stare at the glowing emblem and repeat the words, take me there. A magical sensation ripples through your body and a warm, comforting darkness surrounds you. It feels as though you are becoming one with nature and gliding through the air. 
the letter acts as a port key, and you are being taken to an enchanting realm. You land perfectly on two feet on a thin cobbled street. For a moment you are slightly disoriented, but as you take stock of your surroundings, you realise you are in the heart of London, but a very different London to the one you know. It feels like an old town set in another place and time, away from the hustle and bustle of city centre life. The small crooked streets are hidden away. No one could find this place by themselves. The streets are narrow and dark. The sun is beaming across the sky, but right now its light only grazes the top of the thatched roofs high above you. Then, in a surreal moment, you see a small black and white cat appearing from a tiny alleyway further down the path. The cat approaches calmly and sits opposite you, looking up with a kind curiosity as its tail swishes left and right in no particular rhythm. Was it a trick of the light, or did this very familiar cat give you a slow wink? They stand up on all fours and begin to walk through your legs, swooping in a figure eight, giving off a gentle purr. Then it begins to walk ahead of you, flicking its tail in a gesture, and you know when it turns around to look at you that this graceful animal is inviting you to follow. You come to a cobbled stone wall, and as the cat approaches it, a small arched walkway emerges through the middle, appearing like an optical illusion. You follow the cat through the tight, dimly lit alleyway. The occasional lantern hangs on the curved ceiling providing patches of golden light guiding your way. You carry on, changing direction ever so slightly, to the right, the left, left again, and right, before you come to a straight and narrow passage. At the end is a rickety old wooden door, and at the bottom sits your new friend, waiting patiently as you slowly approach the door. You place a hand against the wooden frame, and a warm, tingling sensation runs through your arm. You flick the latch and push open the door. A golden sunlight washes down over you now, and as your eyes adjust, you see a long cobbled street filled with magical shops and crowded with wizards just like you. The buildings are tall and slightly lean over the narrow street, but the sun is placed perfectly in the sky, illuminating 
the entire alley. The cobbled road continues in a gentle zigzag as far as you can see and is lined with the many colours of the magical shops. A small metal sign is attached to the wall on your right. Diagon Alley. You continue to follow your new companion as they lead you through the crowds. Occasionally, they look back to check on you and make sure you haven't lost your way. But how could you be lost here? It feels just like home. You are right where you belong. It is a breathtaking sight, one that you will never forget. As you turn to look behind, you notice the wooden door has disappeared, keeping this perfect place hidden from the Muggle world. You check your letter once again to see where to go next. The first instruction is to visit the Wizarding Bank and give your key to the Head Goblin. Only then will you be taken to your vault. Your furry companion leads the way as you both walk down the street. The many wizards who pass you by give you a welcoming smile. Some are on their own, carrying many bags and scribbling items off their list. Others are in groups, laughing and playing games. You pass a collection of shops lined up on each side of you. In the green bay window of the shop to your left, you see a beautiful array of broomsticks with brown, black and even silver handles. Some have smooth edges and curved branches. Others are more rugged and rustic. A congregation of wizards eye the broomsticks with desperation. A purple storefront sits on your right with mannequins in different robes and uniforms and many wizards trying on hats and jumpers. Outside the shop sits a long bookshelf with many second-hand books. But inside, through the window, you spy an enormous library, and the smell of old parchment drifts out into the street. You pass by a long line of wizards waiting to go into the next building on your left. The wand makers, to be given their very first and hopefully only wand. The next shop has a beautiful array of animals outside. Some are in cages Owls, mainly, but there are also cats roaming free, rabbits, bats, and many more wonderful creatures. You look straight ahead now, and in front of you is a tall, slanted building, standing proudly high above the rest of the street, 
and held up by thick, circular columns, as white as snow and lined with gold. The Great Goblin Bank At the entrance of the golden doors stands a three-foot goblin with large pointy ears, a long hooked nose and square glasses resting on top. They wear a dark red uniform, again lined with gold, and their thick brown beard rests on the collar of their jacket. In their long fingers they hold a silver quill and a tightly rolled piece of parchment. The black and white cat leaps up onto a marble ledge and curls up for an afternoon nap. They will wait for you here while you take a trip inside the bank. As you climb the marble steps and approach the door, the goblin raises their hand and signals for you to wait there. You see the tightly rolled parchment remove itself from the goblin's grip and unravel in front of their face. The paper hits the floor and continues rolling down the steps, almost into the street. The goblin asks for your name, and you politely tell them. The parchment begins to slowly roll itself up again as the goblin scans each line. For a moment you are met with doubt, convinced now that there must have been some mistake and you will soon be sent back to the muggle world. But then the goblin places a finger on the parchment and it stops rolling. They take their quill and put a line through your name on the scroll. They step back and gesture to the door. So it is real. You truly are a wizard. You look back down along the street, still full of life, and back to the sleepy cat, whose help you are grateful for today. You turn back to the large golden door before pushing it open and walking inside. The halls are white, again held up by gold marbled columns in a long row towards the middle of the bank. On each side of you are collections of dark brown desks with a goblin perched at each one working away and lit by an old-fashioned lamp with a small chain hanging from it. The atmosphere is quiet now and still. The only sound is that of the many goblins scribbling on bank papers. It is a proud but unusual place. Nonetheless, you feel an excitement just being here, and there is a comfort in the quiet air. You begin to walk down the long hallway of the bank and toward a large golden white plinth, on which rests a mahogany desk and there sits the head of the goblin bank, proud and commanding. As you approach the stand, the head goblin holds out a hand and requests your key for examination. You take the key from your pocket, but before you can hand it over, it is lifted out of your grip by magic. 
and floats across the desk into the goblin's long fingers. They turn the key thrice in hand and examine it under a tiny golden machine with eight different magnifiers. At last they lift their head, telling you that all is well, and if you'd like to follow their colleague, they will take you to your vault. From behind the plinth emerges an even smaller goblin, but their face is far friendlier than any goblin you have seen so far. They greet you with a bow and a smile, and you return the gesture. They wave your key in the air and almost skip with delight down a small corridor to your left. You cannot help but laugh at this cheeky fellow, and you follow the young goblin down the corridor. They lead you to a dark room lit by small oil lanterns, where in front of you sits a strange contraption. It looks like a mine cart, but the wheels stick out to the side of the main body and attach to the track. The track goes on through a tunnel as far as you can see. The body of the cart has four seats and several levers, and you have no idea what any of them do. The young, happy-faced goblin gives you an excited smile and tells you to climb into the cart. You are cautious at first, but he reassures you that there are hundreds of magical enchantments protecting this cart and that you are perfectly safe. This is the safest place in the wizarding world, except, of course, the magical castle where you are destined to go. As you step in the cart and buckle yourself into a seat, he tells you that the green lever in front of you dictates the speed of the cart, and you can personally control it by simply pulling or pushing on the lever. You are completely safe and completely in control. Any hesitation is met with a new excitement as you hear the goblin push forward on his lever and the cart pulls away. You begin to journey through the dark tunnel with a high ceiling and filled with a soft blue light. The smell of damp rock lingers in the air and you can hear the goblin chuckling away happily. They turn to you with a smile and tell you that this is their favorite part of the job. Before you know it, the cart emerges from the tunnel and you enter a vast underground cavern full of shining crystals that decorate the open space with a rainbow of light. To your left is a long flowing waterfall cascading over the dark rocks and down below. As you control the speed of your journey, the cart takes you on long, sweeping corners, first to the right and then round to the left. You take in the wonderful, multicolored crystals all around you as you enjoy the soothing journey.
a gentle wind strokes your cheeks and trickles over your arms. The goblin points to the waterfall and tells you you are about to witness something incredible. In that moment, the cart changes direction onto a new track and curves round towards the waterfall. There is a large gap between the flowing water and the rock face, creating a tunnel of water, and the new track leads you round behind the waterfall. You slow the cart right down and disappear under the tunnel of water. Through the pure and clear water, you see a kaleidoscope of colour. Scarlet, sapphire, emerald, deep purple and a bright yellow. All of these coming from the many crystals in the cave and shining through the water. Then a rainbow of dust from all the crystals begins to float around you, filling you with a beautiful magic. It is a mesmerizing thing to witness. As you come round the other side of the waterfall, the cart slowly descends and twists right into another tunnel now, much larger than the last, and decorated with yellow lanterns on the walls. At regular intervals, you notice there are large alcoves embedded in the walls, and each one has its own platform behind which stands a tall, high-security door, riddled with locks. Then, at the end of the tunnel, you see a platform straight ahead, and you know that this is the one. As the cart comes to a stop, the goblin releases your buckles and you step out onto the dusty platform. In front of you now stands a tall black door with a beautiful humming sound coming from within. The four digit number on the door is your date of birth, month then year. This vault has had your name on it from the day you were born. You have dreamt of this day your entire life, and now you are here. The goblin turns to you with a hop. He tells you that when he puts in the key, you need to place your hand on the door, as that is the only combination that will open it. He shuffles the key into the lock, and you rest your hand in the exact middle. You feel the door shudder. This ripples through your arm as the door gives way and opens from the middle. The left side swings out toward you, and the right panel opens inwards to the vault.
your vault is illuminated by a soft light in your favorite color and a single hanging oil lantern. Inside are all of your most valued possessions, safe and protected here. In one corner rests a large pile of coins, gold, silver, and bronze, all yours. On top of the pile is a small handwritten note, which you take between your fingers. A short letter from the headmaster. They wish you luck in your adventure today, collecting your books and equipment and your wand, and they look forward to meeting you when you arrive at the castle. You fold up the letter, take a few handfuls of coins, and place them in your pocket. You turn around with a new excitement as you leave your vault. As you get back into the cart, and set off on your return journey, your mind begins to wander as you take in everything that has happened, and you realize how lucky you feel in this moment. You are grateful for this day, grateful to the owl for bringing you your letter, to the cat for guiding your way, and grateful for the fact that this wonderful, magical world is yours now. Before you know it, the cart pulls up at the original platform. You unbuckle your belt and climb out of the cart. The cheeky little goblin leads you back towards the main hall. On the way, they talk happily to you, telling you about all their duties here at the Great Goblin Bank. They are in charge of looking after your vault and they promise to keep everything safe and in perfect order for your return. As you reach the main door, the goblin hugs your leg tightly, and they wish you well on your journey, and hope you come back soon. You kneel down and thank them for all their help, and their wonderful company. You push open the door and wander back into the magical street. As you return into the afternoon sun and into the bustling alley, you see a wizard standing next to your black and white cat, stroking its head and looking at you with a mischievous glint in their eye. After a quick double take, you soon realize it is your best friend, one of the most important people in your life. You run to them and share a warm hug. Your best friend tells you they too received a letter this morning and had to find their way to this magical place. They had only just received their wand when this lovely cat greeted them in the street and brought them here to wait for you. An uncontrollable smile fills your face and you peer behind you to check in on your furry companion. Indeed, the black and white cat now sits proudly upright on the wall next to you, 
purring softly. They give you an affectionate blink, a sign of trust between animal and human. You cannot believe this little cat has brought your best friend directly to you. The cat has done their duty today. They have brought you here safely, and they will stay here now to help other stranded new wizards find their way. You give them a farewell scratch behind the ear, and they brush their cheek against your hand. You truly hope that your paths will cross again soon. You join your best friend, and together you continue to make your way back through this enchanted street. You turn and share one final look with the cat, who is still watching over you. The day is in full swing now. Shopkeepers stand outside their doors, welcoming new customers, and their young assistants hurry around, pushing trolleys full of books, potion bottles, robes, and suitcases. You see many wizards carrying their new animals. One holds a small toad. Another cradles a puppy. And a third has a brown and white owl resting on their shoulder. The empty cage in their hand. You come at last to a purple fronted building with silver writing across the top. This is the place for new wizards to be fitted into their uniforms and robes, and where you will find all the books you could possibly need. You open the purple wooden door and enter the store, followed by your friend. Inside, one or two wizards are being fitted into uniforms upstairs, as others quietly move through the tall bookshelves on the ground floor. Purple curtains are tied back behind the windows, where the sun beams in spotlights on the tiled floor. From above you, at the top of the stairs, a squat elderly witch calls down to you, telling you that if you'd like to be fitted into new robes, then head up the stairs and she will be with you in a moment. Your best friend leads the way, and you both climb the thin rickety staircase. The wooden handrail is loose and moves in your grip. As you reach the top, the lady's assistant takes your friend to be fitted into their new robes. As you watch them disappear round a corner, the old lady approaches you with a warm and welcoming smile, beckoning you to follow her. With a bubbling excitement, you follow her lead, and she takes you round to the left where a small fitting room awaits, covered by a thick purple curtain. Wand in hand, the lady draws back the curtain, and you head inside. There is a circular wooden platform, which the lady tells you to stand on and hold out your arms. In that moment, a small, compact tape measure floats into the booth. The tape measure begins to glide around you, first stretching out across your arms, then 
wrapping gently around your waist, up to your chest, and across your shoulders. It stretches down your leg and around your feet. The tape measure is proud and sophisticated in its work, and you can tell by the effortless way it dances around you that it has done this a thousand times. After it has taken your measurements, the tape drifts over to the shopkeeper who has jotted down all the numbers. She gives you a nod and waddles away into the store cupboard, followed by her trusty tape. In mere seconds, she returns with a brand new uniform and wizard robe, handmade to perfection. She passes them to you, and with a flick of her wand, the curtain closes, giving you some privacy. As you try on each new layer, you cannot believe how perfectly crafted this uniform is. Every piece fits snug to your body and provides a warm, glowing comfort. Fully robed now, you check the mirror behind you and see yourself as you were always meant to be. It is a breathtaking moment one that leaves you speechless. Your magical journey has finally begun. With a renewed excitement, you quickly change back into your day clothes. And when your last shoe is on, the curtain opens of its own accord, revealing the happy shopkeeper you tell her your uniform is a perfect fit, to which she gives you a kind but knowing smile. They're always a perfect fit, she reminds you with a wink. With a flick of her wand, the lady folds your robes neatly and places them in a bag. And perfect timing too as your best friend emerges from round a corner, their new robes in hand. You thank the shopkeeper with a smile and tell her that you also need to buy some books. She points down to the library below and tells you to find her when you have everything you need. You and your friend wander back down the stairs and into the vast, maze-like library. You take out your list from your pocket and see that three books are needed for this term. Care of Magical Creatures, Mastering Potions, A Complete Guide, and The Wizard's Book of Charms and Spells. You begin methodically to work your way through the books in alphabetical order. The atmosphere is quiet and peaceful, a nice change from the busy street outside. The air is cool and refreshing, away from the summer sun. You arrive at the letter C, and your eyes scan along the bookshelf. You spot a large red leather-bound book with gold writing. You take it from the shelf, blow away a thin layer of dust, and place care of magical creatures into your bag. The smell of old parchment 
lingers and is utterly enchanting. You find yourself in a calm and tranquil state of mind. This world already feels so natural to you, and you couldn't feel more at home if you tried. Just then, you stumble upon the letter M, and an emerald green book at the top stands out clearly. You shuffle mastering potions off the shelf, and flick through the pages. There are charcoal illustrations of many different potions, and long lists of instructions and all the possible side effects. The pages are delicate, and some have slightly frayed edges. You close the book and place it in your bag as you continue to peruse the shelves in search of your final text. In that moment, your friend appears round the corner and passes you one of the two books in their hand. The book is smooth and black, with silver stars and a wand on the cover. You thank your friend and add the wizard's book of charms and spells to your collection. As you emerge from the bookshelves, you see the kind old lady at the front desk. You place two gold and silver coins in her palm, and with uniform and books in hand, you descend once again back into the street. You stroll casually now, your best friend by your side, talking away. You share your stories about how you both arrived here. You tell them about the owl, the black and white cat, and your magical letter that transported you here as a port key. Your friend tells you that their letter was waiting for them this morning, poking through the letterbox, but there was no owl or cat on their journey. Instead, their letter came with a small pouch of powder, which they were told to throw down into their fireplace and speak the name of this enchanting street. Your journey takes you now past a grey and dingy looking shop. In the window are potion bottles full of different coloured liquids pouring back and forth between one another. Cauldrons filled with who knows what stir themselves in a rhythm and bubble away. A gentle steam fills the window and although the shop is dark, it is enticing. You quietly veer away from the street, up a small ramp and through the tall grey door. The air is still here and filled with a light steam. The shop appears to be completely empty. The only source of light is a small crackling fire in a stone fireplace, above which sits a large grey cauldron bubbling softly. The flames burn in bright blue, green and red. As your eyes wander you see statues of gargoyles, 
centaurs, dragons, and other mythical creatures decorating the room. Then, a small trap door in the middle of the room flips open, and a shadowy figure in a black cloak emerges, carrying a handful of strange ingredients, and with a thin layer of dust on their shoulders and their brow. The shopkeeper has a slight hunched back and a shuffling walk. They welcome you to their magical apothecary and tell you to browse freely. But they add with a husky laugh not to drink any of the potions on display. This potions master does seem to have a mysterious air about him, but he is not frightening merely eccentric. He seems to enjoy his image as the dark cloaked figure, and perhaps takes the part a little too seriously, but he is kind nonetheless and friendly to you. With a polite smile you turn away and begin to examine the potion equipment and the endless empty cauldrons as you wander along the creaky floorboards. Back at the main desk, the potions master now stirs a pestle and mortar, grinding a small green rock into a fine powder. A silver and emerald dust drifts up into the air, mingled with starlight. Further along the thick wooden shelf, there is a collection of cauldrons, measuring spoons, bottles, and other equipment, all grouped together. It is exactly what you need. In that moment, before you can touch them, the bottles and cauldrons lift slowly into the air. They arch over the top of you, and you both turn to follow their movement. With a mischievous half-smile, the shopkeeper lightly waves his wand and guides your new equipment into a neat pile before wrapping them up in a large box. With the tying of a black ribbon on the top, it is ready. As you pay the potions master, he advises you to both take a trolley for the remainder of your trip. And in that moment, two metal trolleys roll out onto the shop floor by themselves. They wiggle their front wheels as a greeting to you, excited to finally be put to use. You thank the potions master and you both take a trolley and fill it with your robes, books, and your new box on top before opening the door and rolling your trolleys back into the alley. As you make your way down the cobbled street, you check your list and see that you still have to collect your animal and your wand. Your friend walks beside you, pushing their trolley, and you both continue to take in this magical world. Things are less crowded outside now, still busy, but there is a more relaxed feeling in the air. Many wizards have already bought most of their things, and the day has become more leisurely now. You pass by a gaggle of witches selling magical flowers and jewels on a rickety old cart. There is a small wooden stand selling newspapers with moving pictures. 
Then you pass the magical joke shop, painted in a rich orange and filled with an enormous collection of wizarding toys, sweets and fun activities. Multicolored bubbles float from the door and into the sky, and younger children run and jump after them. You share a knowing look with your friend, and agree to visit this exciting shop when you have everything else that you need. Just then, your friend tugs at your arm and points to the large sign opposite. In front of you is a tall, black building with symmetrical windows that curve in a semicircle out onto the street. A soft light illuminates from them. In the exact middle is a jet black door and golden writing sits at the top the finest wand makers in all the land. Your friend tells you they already have their wand, so they won't be coming in with you. And besides, it's tradition to enter this shop alone. That way, the wand maker can gain a better understanding of who you are and which wand might suit you. This is the part you have been the most nervous for. And now, an excitement builds in you. You leave behind your friend and your trolley, brush yourself down, and enter the wand shop. There is a different kind of magic here. You sense it in the air. Instead of wood panelled walls, you are surrounded by long, thin boxes, all of which, you assume, contain a magic wand. Atop the old, rustic writing desk in front of you, are two lamps perfectly placed and giving the room a warm orange glow. Behind the desk are many corridors of shelves, again full of long thin boxes. The lids are in many different colours and there is no organisation to be seen. There is no symmetry to the room. All the shelves are at a slight angle, the walls are crooked, and even the floor has a shallow tilt to the right. You walk up to the counter and notice a silver bell freshly polished. Your hand lifts over the bell but just as you are about to press it, you stop, sensing a presence. Out from behind one of the many shelves slides a wiry-haired old wizard on a small wooden stepladder. The wand maker himself. His piercing blue eyes gaze at you curiously but this is not a discomfort. His face is soft and his eyes are kind. The wand maker's presence is exciting. He is silent for a moment before greeting you personally by name. Amazed, your eyes widen. You have no idea how they know who you are. He tells you calmly, it is his business to know who comes in and out of his store. They remember every wand they ever sold, and every wizard they sold them to. 
he asks you to place your hands on his desk face up, and he examines the grooves and curves of your palms and fingers. The wand maker looks at you now, an intriguing glint in his eye. He turns instantly, steps up onto his ladder, and slides off into the endless corridor of boxes. He shuffles a box from the shelf and slides back to his desk. With a delicate hand, he takes off the lid. He folds back a white cloth in the box and lifts out the wand. Hand-carved oak and slightly crooked throughout, with three rings on the handle. He passes it to you over the desk and you take it in anticipation. He tells you to give it a wave. Nothing happens, merely a small poof of a blue spark. The wand maker's face drops in disappointment. He takes back the wand and traces his beard with his hand, his eyes wrinkled in thought. He rubs his finger over his thumb as he ponders his next move. His head slowly lifts as an idea seems to form in his mind. He glances to you with a new smile upon his face. Suddenly, he stands bolt upright and comes out from behind the desk, collecting a long wooden ladder on the way. He strides past you and heads to a tall one shelf behind. He climbs the ladder slowly, methodically, until he reaches the top shelf. With a last look back to you, he gives himself a nod. He seems to know now exactly what he is looking for. He shuffles out another box, blowing away the dust from the lid. He descends the ladder, and with a sigh of relief, hands you the box. There is a mysterious and powerful aura about it. The box is decorated in your favorite two colors, with a beautiful swirling pattern on the lid. Your eyes flick up to the wand maker, and he urges you to open it. You shuffle off the lid, and peel back the thick white cloth. And there you see it, a beautiful handcrafted wand, like nothing you have ever seen before. He tells you this wand was made a long, long time ago, crafted by his great grandfather, but it has until now, never been opened. You remove the wand and hold it gently in your hand. The moment you touch it, the wand gives off a golden glow, illuminating the entire shop and surrounding you in a warm light. A strange but wonderful sensation runs through your hand, up into your arm and across your entire body. The hair 
hairs on the back of your neck stand on end, and you feel a new magic surging through you. You feel as though you could fly, as though you could do anything in this moment. This wand has chosen you. The wand maker places a gentle hand on your shoulder and tells you that in all his years of wand making, he has hardly ever seen a connection this powerful between wand and wizard. He knows just by looking at you that you are destined for great things. He tells you that the kindness in your eyes and in your heart is as clear as the morning, and that with this wand by your side as an ally on your adventures, there isn't anything that you can't achieve. This is a truly beautiful moment, one that will stay with you forever. The light from your wand dims now, and you look at it in your hand, taking in its wonder and beauty before slipping it into your pocket. The final piece of the puzzle has been found. You pay the kind old wand maker with a beaming smile before leaving this enchanted shop and heading back out into the street. It is quiet now and the street is nearly empty, but there is still the odd wizard meandering down the cobbles and nipping in and out of the many shops. A golden red light descends into the alley now. A beautiful late summer sunset illuminates the shop windows on this crooked cobbled street. Straight ahead of you waits your best friend, a mischievous smile on their face. While you were inside, they have been to the pet shop and have brought you a magical gift. They reveal a cage from behind their back and inside is your favorite animal looking up at you with hopeful eyes. Your friend opens the cage and you take your new animal in your arms, holding them gently. They curl up in your warm embrace and make themselves comfortable in your arms. They are beautiful and precious. You look to your friend with a grateful smile and thank them for this perfect gift. You place your new companion back into their cage and you set off on your way. As you stroll together now, you ask where to next and with a cheeky smile your friend points down the lane to the orange-fronted store that appears to be glowing in the street. At last, the joke shop. You peer in through the square panelled window and you cannot believe the array of magical toys, sweets and activities going on inside. Your patience disappears as you both push open the door and pile your trolleys 
into a small cloakroom to your left. Then you walk out onto the shop floor. All around you are tall shelves of different colours, filled with a seemingly infinite collection of magical sweets, cookies and toys. Frogs made of chocolate occupy an entire shelf to themselves. There are small boxes of jelly beans in all the colours of the rainbow, and red and black ones made from licorice. You spy a makeshift cauldron with a suspicious green goo inside, bubbling away and stirring by itself. You have no idea what it is, a prank most likely, but you dare not touch it to find out. The shop is filled with many wizards, but the atmosphere is perfect. A gentle hustle and bustle fills the air, and everywhere you look are happy, smiling faces, enjoying every moment in this magical place. The floor is soft under your feet and springy to walk on, and it makes you feel light and airy. With every step you take, the floor releases tiny multicoloured bubbles that rise up to the ceiling before popping on the roof. And as your eyes lift up, the open plan room reveals that there is an upstairs platform with many more magical gifts. There is a fountain of falling sweets in the middle of the store, where you see young wizards holding out extendable paper cups and filling them all the way to the top. To your left is an old-fashioned carnival-style sweet machine, decorated in yellow and red stripes, with a silver switch in the middle. Four panels of glass show that inside are small pieces of chocolate spinning on a turnstile inside the machine. In the top of the machine is a tiny dragon with bright blue scales on its body. As the balls of chocolate turn, the dragon lets out a few blasts of fire warming them through. You watch a small young wizard run over to the machine, and turning the silver switch, a warm chocolate sweet drops out into their hand. They pass the chocolate between their hands to cool it down, before popping it neatly in their mouth. Just behind you, you overhear a trio of talking wizards. They mention a secret room upstairs, in which there is a magical levitation chamber. You tap your best friend on the shoulder and gesture upstairs, telling them what you have heard. Their eyes widen with excitement and you both work your way through the crowd and toward a thin, spiral staircase. As you walk onto the first step, the staircase begins to move in a slow circle, and you are carried upstairs. As you slowly rise up, you look out over the huge joke shop, taking in all the wonderful goings-on and the enchanting atmosphere 
inside. When you reach the top, the staircase stops at the perfect moment and you move off onto the top walkway. Your friend follows just behind and you take them by the arm and lead them along the walkway with an excitement in your stomach. In front of you now stands the curtained off secret room. You check the coast is clear, pull back the curtain and rush inside. The dark room is lit by more floating bubbles, similar to the ones below, only these do not pop. Instead, they give off a soft, bluey purple light and float effortlessly around the room. In the middle of the room is the levitation chamber. It is a huge dome shape, big enough for three or four people, and you and your friend step inside together. You press a green button on the chamber door, and it begins to give off an enchanting sound. It feels almost space-like. Instantly, you feel yourself being lifted. You gently push off from the ground and feel that you are now floating inside the chamber. The purple-blue light echoes round the room as you watch specks of silver drift up from the floor and surround you in a magical stardust. You both drift around the chamber, laughing together and pulling funny poses in mid-air. You feel eternally grateful for your best friend. And then, a deep relaxation begins to run through your body, and you allow yourself to become one with the chamber, floating in complete peace. You feel any tension releasing from your muscles. Each part of you, bit by bit, is becoming more and more relaxed as you gently drift inside the starlight dome. You have never felt so relaxed in all your life. Any remaining thoughts leave your mind and disappear into the starlight. You allow yourself to let go of everything. Your arms hang loose by your side, free from all tension. You feel your legs soften and any holding in the muscles completely melts away. Your back and shoulders become loose and soft and you feel your chest and stomach slowly expand with each calming breath.
every muscle in your face releases tension now. Your brows soften, your cheeks and jaw become loose, and your mouth drifts open, relaxed. You are completely free. You feel grateful for this wonderful experience and grateful for your best friend who is by your side on this magical adventure. Nothing else matters but this moment. This is a wonderful place full of hope, of possibility and of endless magic. As you begin to drift back to the floor, you feel a new sense of peace inside you now. The specks of stardust begin to fade and you are slowly lowered back to the ground, safe and sound. Before you leave the chamber, you and your friend share a warm embrace, thanking each other for being a part of your lives and sharing an excitement for the adventures that await you. You wander out of the room together, back onto the walkway before descending on the spiral staircase, gazing out over the still busy shop floor. You meander through the many wizards still browsing, collect your trolleys and leave the joke shop, an unstoppable grin on your face. You enter the now dark street and the moon hangs high above you, a white pearl beaming down. One or two stars begin to pepper the sky, and tall lampposts provide a scattered collection of orange spotlights down the street. You look to your friend with a smile and decide it is time for some supper, although your smile quickly fades when you both realise you don't know where to go. As if in answer to a prayer, you feel a brushing against your legs, and there is your old friend, the black and white cat, here to guide you one final time today. You bend down and stroke your furry companion in thanks, and they roll over on their back, accepting a few loving strokes on their tummy. Then they roll back onto all fours and begin to snake their way down the street as you follow behind. As you walk, you check the contents of your trolley and see that everything is in perfect order. You squeeze a finger through the cage of your animal and give them a loving tickle under the chin as they sniff your hand affectionately. Your new companion who is now to share this magical adventure with you. 
On each side of you, you watch the many lights of the shop windows slowly go out one by one as the owners settle in for the night. You look up into the deep black night and the stars are slowly orbiting directly above you, pulsing gently. They provide a powerful enchantment, protecting this sacred, magical world. Before long, you come to a small brick building with a thatched roof, tucked quietly away in the corner of the street. A warm light flows from the window, and a black sign in the shape of a cauldron swings above you. The black and white cat climbs up the shallow ramp leading to the door, and turns back to face you. This is the place. With a gentle scratch on their head, you thank the cat for all their help today. They purr softly and give your hand an affectionate lick before slipping off into the night. You turn back just as your best friend opens the door and you both head inside. You are met with a blast of heat and the sound of a crackling fire which you see in the middle of the tavern, nestled in a stone fire pit, warming the entire room. Over the fire rests a large cauldron with a fresh, hot stew bubbling away. A musician sits in one corner, playing a gentle tune. The tavern holds a warm and pleasant atmosphere, with a handful of wizards lingering at the bar, or sitting in small groups at wooden trestle tables. The smell from the cooking pot is delicious, and coupled with the aroma of butterscotch beer, you are lured deeper into the tavern as you and your friend find a table. In that moment, you see a barman approach, slightly grubby looking, but friendly enough. He has a towel over his shoulder and a small apron round his waist. You ask if you can both rent a room, and with a twinkle in his eye, he tells you you are lucky, there are only two rooms left. You pay the barman at once, and he hands you both a key with your room numbers, offering to have your luggage taken upstairs. You thank him with a smile, as you and your friend each take your animal from their cage and place them next to you, before the rest of your luggage is taken away up to your rooms. As your eyes wander round the tavern, you notice chairs stacking themselves at empty tables. Pots, tankards and glasses in the kitchen are being washed in mid-air by scrubbing brushes, all circling in the same rhythm. One wizard sits at the bar in a tall pointy hat, reading a newspaper in mid-air and enjoying a slice of bread and cheese as the spoon in their soup stirs of its own accord. There is a small bucket bobbing through the air, filled with hot soapy water 
and a clean rag, drifting from table to table and wiping them down. You realize just how much you love magic. Just then, the barman returns carrying a tray. On the tray are two glass tankards filled with a rich orange liquid and a thick foam topping. These drinks lift themselves off the tray and land on the table, one for each of you. The barman places down two empty bowls and spoons and you watch wide-eyed as you see a giant ladle lift out of the middle cauldron and float over to your table. Any drops of stew are being caught by a small hand towel diligently following underneath the ladle. In two slow motions, the ladle fills your friend's bowl and then your own. The rich, creamy liquid gives off a tantalizing smell and a warm steam rises from it. Two pieces of freshly baked bread slice themselves from a warm loaf brought by the barman. All of this is on the house, the barman tells you. A welcome gift for two exciting new wizards. You thank him kindly and he leaves you to enjoy your stay. A small candle in the middle of your table flickers gently and dances in the wind when the door swings open and more wizards enter the tavern. You take in the quirky yet magical surroundings as you enjoy the first mouthful of this delicious food. There is a warm sensation in your stomach and you feel a homely comfort surging through you. The butterscotch beer is refreshing, cleansing your palate and relaxing you deeper. As you continue to eat, you stroke your animal next to you, who is now awake and nibbling small pieces of bread that you break off for them. You talk happily with your friend about your day, reminiscing on all the wonderful places you have been. Then you begin to share your dreams and aspirations for when you get to the castle and for your life as a wizard. You feel truly blessed to have them by your side. You cannot imagine taking this journey with anyone else. The sound of the fire and the calming atmosphere lulls you into a deep relaxation and you feel your eyes begin to drift closed. You reach into your pocket and check your train ticket. 11 o'clock tomorrow morning at King's Cross Station. You and your friend decide now that it is time to get some sleep. You have another busy day ahead of you. Tomorrow, you will take the journey aboard the Hogwarts Express to begin your adventure as a wizard.
ready to study at the most magical castle in the world. With your animal cage in hand, you thank the barman and wander up the creaky wooden stairs, followed by your best friend. On the wall next to you are moving portraits of all the previous owners of this historic tavern. In one picture, a large plump wizard is cooking over a huge pot and hosting a merry gathering. In the next, a young witch is waving her wand as a pile of vegetables chop themselves into a pan. Another portrait shows two old ladies with curly hair preparing a meal and laughing together. There are almost too many pictures to count, each one celebrating a new generation of the tavern. Finally, when you reach the top of the stairs, you see a moving photograph of the current owner and barman, washing tankards by hand and smiling to the camera. At the top of the landing, you bid your friend a good night and wander down the slanted corridor. You are not sure if your eyes will keep open much longer. And then, at last, you reach a small wooden framed door with your room number on it. You slide in the key, unlock the door, and push it open. A small fire burns quietly in the corner, keeping your room a perfect temperature. Thick wooden beams cross above you, crooked but strong, and a white window sits at the far side of the room. Your bags and cases are all lined up in perfect order, ready for your journey tomorrow. You empty your pockets, place the letter and the ticket on your bedside table and dim the oil lantern nearby so as to leave a soft yellow light gently glowing in the corner. You place your animal on your luggage and offer them another mouthful of bread before giving them a stroke under their chin as they settle down to sleep. Outside the small window you spot the white moon high in the sky. A shooting star of bright silver arches over the moon and blazes across the night. You walk heavily to your large, soft bed with a huge white mattress and flop down onto it. It is like falling into a thick, fluffy cloud. The duvet wraps perfectly around you and you sink ever so slightly down into the mattress. The pillow fits to your head and your whole body is supported and comfortable. As you lie there now, you begin to replay all the wonderful events of the day in your memory. And you remind yourself how lucky you are 
to have experienced all these magical things today. After what feels like a lifetime of waiting, you finally received your letter. And tomorrow you embark on the greatest adventure of your life. Your journey to Hogwarts. Your mind drifts deeper and deeper into relaxation and comfort. And your body is completely free. There is a new calmness and a new confidence within you now. You can do whatever you set your mind to. As the fire burns gently, keeping you warm and comfortable, you give yourself permission to let go now. You can rest easy, and when you wake in the morning, adventure awaits. You are safe. You are warm, you are protected. The wizarding world will guide your dreams tonight and you are well looked after here. You drift deeper and deeper now and off to sleep.